and welcome to Divine Lee Design Studio. My name is Nicole Reed, and today we're going to make this cute little sewing machine needle organizer. So let's get started. Okay, so there's just a few things that you need to do first. You need to head over to our website and grab the pattern for this. Uh, it is there as a downloadable um, uh, file and you can see there that we need some vinyl and you've uh, got some craft felt and, and whatnot but there's a list of everything that you'll need there so if you head over and grab that and then come on back and we can get started okay so there's a few things that you're going to need to to make this project you're going to need some clear vinyl some tissue paper some fusible fleece some SF 101 interfacing, an outer fabric, a coordinating lining fabric. You're also going to need some bias binding. So if you've already got some ready-made bias binding, you can use that. But I will show you how to make some uh, bias binding for our vinyl pockets. So you'll need two strips of that. You'll also need some felt. You will need a pair of thread snips. A quick, a quick unpick just in case, some wonder clips, a pair of pinking shears, a pair of paper scissors, some sort of marking tool, a tool to poke your corners out, a rotary cutter, and for me, I use a leather needle when I'm sewing with vinyl because they're sharp. And they go through very easily and I don't have any issues. So some leather needles or a universal needle in a 90, uh, 14 would be a good size to have. So these ones here are a size 90. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is we have to make our bias binding for our vinyl rectangles. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I've done this one off camera, but that's what we're aiming for. Okay, so it's nice and crisp and clean and all folded, ready to go. So basically give your strip a good press. Add any sort of best press or the, your favorite starch to it. Just makes it easier for holding it in place. You're going to fold it in half with the right sides of the fabric facing out and the wrong sides touching. And you're going to crease it in half. And I also use my uh, clapper just to get a nice crease with it. Let's give it a bit of a press. And you can see there that's made a nice crease. And now what I'm going to do is open that up and I'm going to bring my raw edges into the center line that I've just created with the, with the iron. So just like this. And again, I use my clapper to get a nice crease. And I continue along. And then I'm going to repeat that with the other side. And I'll just bring the other side into the center as well, making sure that it's nice and straight. And I, the second side is a little bit easier to do because you can actually iron the whole piece. And then we just fold it in half again. And I use my clapper. Give this end a bit of a press. So you can see there that it's you've got that first line and then you're folding them in and then you're folding it over on itself and that's your bias tape. And then basically what we do now is we're going to attach it to our vinyl and we just slide our vinyl in there and with some wonder clips we actually just then stitch that down. Okay, so I'm going to head off to the sewing machine and get that done. Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to take your bias tape that we just made and you're going to attach that with your wonder clips to one edge the long edge of your vinyl so it looks like that and you do that to both pieces of your vinyl and I'm just going to stitch this down now with a straight stitch do a reverse at the beginning and at the end and then that will be attached and we can sit them aside and move on to the next part okay so with an eighth of an inch seam allowance you're going to stitch a straight stitch all the way along and then we're going to turn around when we get to the other end and we're going to come back and that's going to secure the binding over the vinyl and in place very securely and it won't come off. Making sure you're aligning as you're going. Okay. 
and now we go back so again aligning up your presser foot at one at an eighth of an inch and that's just going to hold it in place securely because you will be pulling uh, your needle boxes in and out and you don't want it to come away from the uh, vinyl and you repeat that with the second one which I have done off camera so now you'll have two vinyl pockets with the binding attached and we just trim off the excess off the sides in line with the edge of the um, vinyl and that will get caught up in our seam allowance when we assemble the rest of the uh, pouch is we're going to take our lining fabric so you've already cut it out to size and you're going to grab your SF 101 and you're going to lay that with the bumpy side down onto the wrong side of the fabric and then you're going to press that into place and then you'll set that aside and then you'll grab your outer fabric and you'll grab, you'll grab the fusible fleece and with the bumpy side again onto the wrong side of the fabric we lay that down making sure it's in place and then from the fabric side I press that out because it's a polyester it can melt under it can sometimes like shrink up underneath heat um, so I always press it from this side and then I have an applique sheet that I use that I place over the top and then that way I know that it's not going to stick to my iron and I give that a really good press and then we're right to go okay so now we're going to get our lining piece and you're going to lay it like this and then you're going to get your vinyl pockets and you're going to align your raw edges just like so I'm actually going to go for the bit more colorful side just like that and you do the same with the top and just align them in place and what we're going to do is just get our wonder clips and just secure them so they don't move and I just put one I just put one down the bottom like that and then the same up at the top just making sure that they're aligned and they're straight and then I place one onto the edge here as well and that will just hold the top into pl in place and that's not going to move on you then So once they're secured in place then you get your outer fabric and you place it right sides down so it looks like that and then what you can do is just move all your wonder clips to hold all pieces in place And the reason I use Wonder Clips is because it doesn't make any holes or anything in the vinyl and it doesn't bend the, the pins or anything like that. It just makes it it's for ease more than anything. Okay, so once you've done that, you want to just make a mark. And this piece here, you're going to not sew. So you can see there that I've just put with my water erasable marker just put a, a mark there and I know that I'm not going to sew that because this is what we're going to use to turn our project all the right ways out okay so once you're happy with everything you're lining up and all your raw edges are matching and everything is in place we're going to take that to the sewing machine and we're going to start over here we're going to sew all the way around back to this point here reversing when we start and when we finish and then we'll turn our project out and then we'll um, put everything else together okay so we're at the sewing machine now and you're going to be using a quarter inch seam allowance and you're going to start sewing where our mark was and then we're going to reverse so stitch a couple of stitches and then reverse it and then continue all the way around until we get to our second blue mark and we'll reverse there
Okay, so we've sewn that all the way around and now what we're going to do is turn it in the out the right way. Okay, so now we're ready to turn our project in the right way. So first of all, we're going to take some of the bulk out of the corners. So we just snip that off just close to the threads, uh, to the stitching, but not too close. And you're going to do that on all four corners. So just like so. And then we go to where we've left our opening and we just stick our hands in. Go up to the corner and just turn that through and repeat for all your four corners and turn it all the way around. Okay, so once it's all turned in the right way, you want to make sure that your seams are all even and sitting flat. And what you can do, if you've got an applique mat, which looks like this, you can actually press this and you're not going on a, a warm iron, not a hot iron. You can actually press this in place with the vinyl. Um, short of having this, you can use greaseproof paper, um, a brown paper bag, you can use that as well. Um, or some tissue paper but doubled over um, you just don't want the iron to hit that and I also flip it completely over and press it from this way as well but I still used um, use this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over off camera and press all that and then I'll come back and we'll do our final assembly okay so we've pressed all that out and we're almost up to the final assembly part now first we're going to top stitch all the way around and to do that we need a piece of tissue paper and you're going to do it about an eighth of an inch and what will happen is where our opening is that will actually close up and then we can start adding our sections for the pockets and also our felt in the center so I'm going to move over to the sewing machine and you just place your tissue paper on top and because you can actually see, you can see there, you can see through the tissue paper so you can see the edge and you just want an eighth of an inch all the way around. I would increase your stitch length to a three. That is a really nice um, stitch length for top stitching. So I'm heading over to the machine now and we'll get started on that. Okay, so we've loaded it into the machine. As you can see, you can see the edge of your uh, project and the tissue paper is covering everything and what this does is it just makes it easy to sew through with the vinyl so we're going to get started we're going to sew all the way around doing a reverse at the beginning and at the end So there you go, we've sewn all the way around, so now all you do is just pull off the tissue paper and you can see it just comes away very easily. And I try to be a bit careful when I'm getting it out of the centre because we can re we can use this piece for when we're making our pocket sections. So if you just pull that back, it'll just perforate away, and then we've got this piece left, and we can use that in just a second when we put our felt on. So what you want to do now is get your felt, you just want to eyeball this, making sure that it's even, so it's about three quarters of an inch away from the edge. Okay, so get a couple of pins and what we're going to do is just pin this in place.
and then we're going to sew all the way around the outside and what that's going to do is it's actually going to start to quilt the outside and then we'll make our pockets you also want to find the center of your um, felt as well and you want to draw a line down there and sew that as well and that will help with the ease of um, when we put our needles in and out so just grab a ruler and it's approximately two inches so just put a mark there mark in the center And a mark there and then just stitch down the center there and all the way around using about an eighth of an inch seam allowance making sure everything's laying flat for me I'm just using the edge of my presser foot that's quite narrow removing the pins as I go So you can see there I've just sewn all the way around and also down the centre line. So next we're on to making our pockets for the needles. Okay, so that's all sewn in now. So we're going to get our piece of tissue paper that we had before. And we're basically, what we're going to do is just lay that down there. And then we're just going to put a couple of pins in the centre here just to hold it in place. And along your binding strips is probably a good one to put it at as well. Okay, so we've got a few pins in there and that's holding it in place for us and what we're going to do is as you can see here I've just lined this up on the edge of my um, cutting mat and it's measuring 10 inches in width okay and it's about 8 inches in height so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to find our center part so the center spot for this is actually 5 inches so we have measure from the edge using our little ruler We'll find with our um, marker, we're just going to put a little mark like that. And then from that mark there, we're going to measure to the left hand side, we're going to measure two and a half. And then the same again to the right. And you're going to repeat that at the other end. So we'll find our five inch mark. And then from that mark, we find our two and a half inch, and then to the left, and then to the right, two and a half. And basically, what we'll do is we'll just join those lines, just like so. And just before we sew, we'll make sure that we can actually fit a needle case in there. Because what we're going to do is sew on those lines and that's going to create our pockets. So we'll just move this one out of the way for a second. And I can see just by sliding that under that that is definitely going to fit in there. All right, so we're right to sew now. So in just in um, elongating your stitch length to about a three again, because we're going through so many layers. And you're going to stitch from this point to the top point and then you're going to do that for each of those lines and that's going to give us on each side four pockets for our machine needles so let's head over to the sewing machine and get that done alrighty so we're back at the machine and now we're just going to stitch and you reverse at the beginning and the end just for a little bit of added security and we're doing about a three on our stitch length we we'll just go through all layers removing the needle uh, the pins as we go and 
and repeat. Okay, so we've done that and now we can just remove our tissue paper. Okay, so you can see that there are little um, needle boxes fit in there and if you've got some spare needles from another one you can actually just slide them in there and they can match the, the needles above. I've got all sorts of different needles that you can use and you can actually, with some packets, depending on the make, you can actually fit oops, you can actually fit two packets in each pocket. So now we're going to attach our snap buttons and then we will be finished. Okay, so a couple of things we need for this step. You can actually not, you don't actually have to have the, the snap buttons in it, but I do like it with the snap buttons because it just holds it closed. So you can see on this one, it's just, it's closed. You can pop it in your bag. You know that it's not going to fall apart. So to, to do this step, what we need to do is actually put um, two set, sets of snap buttons in and then it'll be able to close. So I'm going to get all the parts out and I think I'm going to use a green for this one. So we're going to go with a light green today. So you need two sets of snap buttons. So you need two outers, a female part and a male part. I'll give you a closer look at those. So that's what those parts look like. So one's got, fits into that one. Okay. Okay, so we've got those sets there. You also need an awl and you also need your setting tool as well for your snap buttons. Basically what you do now is you can see there that you've got your bias binding and that's where your vinyl pockets end. So you want to be not on them but just very close to them. So as you can see on this one here that I've already done. So it's about um, an eighth of an inch down or just past the, the top stitching there that you can see on both sides and then about an eighth of an inch down from the edge is where you want to place your snap fastener so about there and you just push your all through and that creates the hole and then we get one of the buttons and put it through and then grab a male part of your snap button Grab our tool Give it a light squeeze, not too hard because you'll break it and repeat for the other opposite end So you get the other part of the snap fastener and the female end because we just used the male Lining it all up and clamping it closed and we repeat for this side as well so bring it up together all the way through getting one of the buttons and repeating with the other end. Just a light squeeze and they're done. And there we go. That is our little pouch. So as you can see you can fit quite a few needles in there. And these are denim ones so I'm just they're spare ones so I'm just going to put them in. And there we go. Okay, so that's our tutorial to, for today. I hope you really enjoyed making our little sewing machine cover. They're so cute and handy to have. You can fit eight, eight little pa um, packets of needles in there. And in some cases, you can actually fit two lots of needles in it. So that's a, that's a good amount of sewing machine needles. And 
you can see here that it just clips together and it's all done and you pop it in your bag and off you go so if you like this video today give us a thumbs up down below consider subscribing to our channel so that way you won't miss out on any future posts and as always we love to hear from you so leave a comment below and tell us what you thought about this little tutorial we also have a, a very active Facebook group the link is down below so click that link it'll scoot you on over and we can add you to the group and you can start sharing some of your products with some like-minded people have a great day everybody My my name's Nicole Reed for Divinely Design Studio and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.